we're going to chat a bit about private ownership of guns. And I specify that this is the topic because frequently there's a kind of a dishonest thing that said that some people want to get rid of guns or make them illegal, uh, make them disappear. And in fact, very few people want that. Uh, the people that are the loudest uh, against guns, uh, as it is said, they don't want to get rid of guns. They want their military to have them. They want their police. They want their bodyguards, etc., to have guns. And they want them to have huge, very effective guns. So it's not a matter of wanting to get rid of guns. It's a matter of who has those guns, who has them in their hands, plenty of ammo, plenty of training, can take them wherever they go, hidden, in view, whatever, who has absolute access to them. And that is what the argument is about. And I am not going to argue with that in this particular video. I'm not going to argue about whether or not that's right or wrong or sensible or stupid. I'm going to talk about something very different. I'm going to talk about the pragmatic side of it. And I'm going to tell you that you can't get rid of all the guns. And y you can get a lot of them. Australia got a bunch of them. There aren't a ton of them in the UK. But those places didn't start out with as many as the United States has. And you're going to get most of them. Again, the, the people that are on Facebook talking about, you know, you're not going to get them from me. No, as soon as you send out something to them and you get their insurance company to say that they're not going to give them homeowner's insurance if there are firearms in the home. Or you, you put something out on their next uh, income tax when they're supposed to tell you how much money they made so that the, the government can steal it from them. When, you, when that form is sent out, if you have some checkbox on it that says there are guns in the home or I certify that there are no guns in the home, and either way, if you check either of those boxes, you're thereby giving permission to have your home searched. Um, and of course, they're not going to come search it the next day. That would make everybody go crazy. But even if that happened, and then two years later, four years later, eight years later, the doctor said, well, you know, we, we can't give you health. You know, I'm not going to serve you in my office. You don't get health care from us if you're going to have guns in the home around children. Um, that's just unsafe. And so you get that that outside influence. And then you get more movie stars and social media people uh, speaking out against them, YouTube personalities, etc. And you get all this propaganda. You continue it against them. And you would get rid of a lot of guns. There might only be a million, five million guns left in the United States. That's a lot. And how do we gauge what would be a realistic amount of guns? that could be seized or gotten off the streets. However, cops and military are on the streets, so that isn't a perfectly true term. Let's say, get them out of private, peaceful citizens' hands. So let's say that you were successful. What would success look like? Do you feel that you, the fascist tyrants that choose to rule how other people live their lives, what property they own, do you, the fascist tyrants, do you feel you've been pretty successful getting marijuana off the streets? How do you feel you've done? How do you feel you've done getting meth off the streets? The war on uh, illiteracy. Still a bunch of illiterate people. And I'm not saying that I could do any better. I wouldn't engage in such nastiness of, of trying to change other people's lives by force. I would maybe try to persuade them, but I would never do it by force. But I can't do any better. You're only going to have a certain amount of success. And it occurs to me that if you're trying to get all the guns away from all the people that might do some mean, nasty, horrible things, you can't. If that's what you think you can do, even if you have 98% success, that's not that's not a successful solution. You have failed. Even if you were successful getting 30% of the marijuanas off the street, how's that successful? Okay, there are fewer relaxed people munching on snacks, but how, how is that? That's not a high level of success. Don't be proud of that. 
you're not going to be able to get them all. I mean, you can try, you can get a bunch of them, you can get a ton of them, I agree. But it's kind of silly for you to think that you can make laws, have big seizures or buybacks. How ridiculous is the term buyback? You can't buy back something you didn't first sell or have cause the other person to acquire. So if Bill sold me a gun, the only person that can buy back that gun is Bill. And if you ain't Bill, you're stealing something from me. Even if you're giving me some money in exchange for it, you're stealing it. I really wanted it. I didn't want your money. I wanted it. You're a thief. So buybacks are stupid. It's just it's ridiculous from a pragmatic sense to think that you're going to have a material level of success stealing private people's guns. It's, it's silly.